welcome. So in this lesson, we are looking at how to sing Perfect by Ed Sheeran. So I'm just gonna tell you right now, we're not gonna be going through note for note how to sing this song, but we are gonna talk about some of the stylistic things that Ed is doing as he sings the song. We're gonna talk about some strategies that you can use to help you practice this to have the most success, because this is such a stunner of a tune. It's so romantic and so lovely, so let's dive in. Before you even get started, I'm gonna recommend that you warm up on this song using the bubble. So we have a practice track linked up for you below. Uh, warming up with the bubble is a great way, A, to warm your voice up, but also to help you develop muscle memory on all of the notes. So I'm not gonna go through that right now, but I'm just gonna tell you, as a general rule of thumb, that's a great strategy for setting yourself up for song success. So I'm gonna pretend like you just went and sang through the song on the bubble and we are going to dive into the music now. So step one, say the words. If you can't say them, how are you gonna sing them? So I found a love for me. Darling, just dive right in and follow my lead. So if you can get all of those words out of your mouth, you're ready to sing them. So I found a love. Here's, here's a plot twist. We're not gonna sing them like we'd say them. So yes, it's important to be able to say all of the words. If you can't say them, you can't sing them. But we're also not gonna sing them like we'd say them because then we would sound like this. I found a love for me, <laughs> right? Cause that's how I'd say it. I found a love for me. <laughs> well, maybe I wouldn't have grabbed the R quite so much, but you get what I am saying here. Instead of singing I, I'm gonna sing a. Uh. I found a love. And I'm gonna focus on the ah uh, on the word love as well. I'm also gonna get rid of some of the R on for me. So it's gonna be more like, I found a love for me. Instead of for, that R gets in the way. It like blocks your path of sound. So think for. It seems a little bit ridiculous, but when you go and sing it with that, you're gonna be like, whoa, what a difference. Uh, and this is a little bit low for me. I'm singing it in Ed's key, so just please forgive me. Some of these notes are, I'm working really hard to hit because they're, in the bottom of my range. I found a love for me. This brings me to the next thing. He's got all these little runs that are happening in the song. And so while I may not sing this exactly like Ed, one of the things that he does is these little runs and they're notes that are really close together. So the secret to these is you just gotta slow them down and isolate each note till you get it. I found a love for, for. So I practice it like that. For, and then you can speed it up. For, take some work. But with practice, it's possible. Me, darling, just dive right in. Again, I didn't go my, I went follow my lead. And you don't necessarily notice this when you're listening to someone sing, but I bet you if you go back and listen to Ed sing this, you're gonna notice that he sings some of those words a little bit differently. Now, yes, he does have an accent that is different than mine. And it's actually a positive because in Canada, we say kind of everything here. It's like smiling, kind of nasal. But in the UK, the Accents more like the, the vowels are more long and that's actually really a good thing for singing. It's gonna make things sound better. So instead of for me, like Canadian style, for me. <laughs> for me. What's the difference? Darling, just dive right in and follow my lead. Well, I found a girl. Okay, here's another thing he does. Beautiful and sweet. He like cuts off the phrases, like he shortens them. So instead of beautiful and sweet, he cuts off that sweet, beautiful and sweet. It's just such a sweet thing to do on the word sweet. So if we continue on, we are not going to sing I never. We're gonna sing I never knew, I never knew, really round for the ooh. You were, not were, that, that, the, the someone waiting for me. I never knew you were the someone waiting for me. So there he does a little run again. So let's find the notes. Me. 
basically what's happening. That's the crazy thing with all these little runs in pop music. The notes are usually just like a step apart. Um, and that's what makes them kind of challenging to sing because when notes are really close together, the changes that we need to do to like negotiate that from a muscular standpoint is like so subtle. So you have to have control. So you could practice that like mm, 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 me, me. Spend some time there. You don't have to rush. Practice is different than performance. So don't feel bad if you have to stop. Me, we were just, let's play with it a bit. Okay. I never knew you were the someone waiting for me. Cause we were just kids when we fell in love. So here he does this like, ah. So when you listen back, pay attention for that. If you're wanting to kind of mimic what he's doing here, we were just kids when we fell in love, fell in love. And then he cuts off the phrases, love, not knowing what it was. I will not give you up. Can't hit this low note. This time, darling, just kiss me slow. And there he does that again, slow. Slow, we've got O to O. They call that a diphthong, isn't that a weird word? Slow, and he uses the O on the end of that word to like stylize. Darling, just kiss me slow. Your heart is all I own, and in your eyes you're holding mine. And it continues on. Babe. Oh, he does a flip there. We should talk about that. So he kind of like, bay, bay. It's like, it's tricky to practice. It's like you're connected, bay, and then you let it go. So you could practice like it's almost like a cry. Ah. <laughs> it's a really weird thing to practice, but bay. You just sort of, I don't know, let go. It takes practice, but once you feel it, you'll be like, oh, that's what that feels like, and you'll be able to control it more. So for now, you can just practice like, ah, try to make Tarzan noises. Baby, I, there you go. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at the chorus, and then it'll be up to you to go have some fun practicing. But I want to look at a couple more just little things. So we had our little Tarzan moment. Baby, I, dancing in the dark. Again, don't grab those R's. Dog. Lean into the vowels. It's a really great way to sort of help you negotiate and navigate through a phrase in a song. And one of the things that I, I love to suggest doing is just to sing through whole portions of a song on the vowels only. Um, so, hmm, ah, ah, ooh, ee, ah. Something that you can do, especially because this uh, this part of the song kind of goes a little higher. So if you are a male voice or a lower voice singing this, um, you might find like, oh, we're having to work a little bit harder for this. So that was that was the main thing I wanted to bring your attention to. In this chorus is kind of where the song is building to. So you're gonna want to add a little more energy to it. You're gonna want to make sure that you're like, you're approaching this with what you need. So this is a really good spot to use the bubble. <laughs> So it's a great spot to sing through on the vowels because if you listen to Ed singing this, he's like, he's so emotionally invested and it's a little bit too low in my range for me to demonstrate this, you know, the way I would like to, but like he's going for it. So he's like, dancing in the dark. So he's really like, he's, he's grabbing in on each of those. I guess they call that the downbeat. Dancing in the dark with you between my arms. So it's not barefoot, it's barefoot on the grass, listening to our favorite song. I'm being kind of silly right now, but it's a, it's such an emotional song. So if you want to have the impact that you want to have when you're singing this, you need to get invested in the story. So like, read these lyrics. What do they mean to you? I've got my lyrics down there. That's why I just did that. I'm looking at my lyrics. <laughs> so what do they mean to you? Connect a story to it. Uh, listen to Ed and hear for the inflections in his singing. Like, where is he leaning in? And then come back to it and make it your own. So it's this kind of like balancing act when we're learning to cover songs. Sometimes we want to mimic what the artist is doing, and that's great. It's a great way to practice and learning how to make stylistic choices and where and when to execute them. It's great. But you can also look at this in a completely different way and sing this with your own unique voice. Maybe you use some of Ed's little tricks. 
I know I've learned some things just even investigating this song to teach this lesson to you. Um, but you can also make it uniquely yours. So, you know, if I'm singing this. Dancing in the dark with you between my arms. I'm kind of letting my voice flip a little bit. I'm using some head voice. I'm coming back to chest voice. I'm choosing to make this my own adventure, which is where I want to leave you with this lesson. We've talked about a lot of stuff. We've talked about how you can warm up on the song. We've talked about, you know, some good strategies, singing through on the vowels, um, using that bubble so that you make sure you have the right breath balance. We've talked about some of the little things that Ed does to make this his own. We talked about those runs, and then we've talked about how to make this uniquely yours. So, I hope this inspires you a little bit. I hope that you watch this and you're like, ah, oh, I wanna go sing this song. We've got a track for you down below. You can just click the link. It'll take you to the, like a karaoke version that you can sing along with. Have so much fun with it. Let me know how it goes. Comment below. I absolutely love hearing from you and happy practicing.